I mean, how do you compete with Zillow, a billion dollar corporation? It's basically Zillow versus agents that take listing photos with their thumb, like in the corner of the photo. <laughs> That's the competition. <laughs> How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Sean and Matt Show. My name is Matt. That is Sean, and welcome to our show. Sean, in today's episode, we're going to be talking about institutional investors that are buying up entire subdivisions. Crazy. Zillow has recently improved their Zestimate and their AI, and also a water tower for sale. The water tower is actually a house in Southern California that is listed for $5 million. Let's start with um, something that has taken social media by buzz a little bit. It is an article um, from the Wall Street Journal and a few other places that say, says, if you sell a house, the buyer might be a pension fund. DR Horton, uh, a home builder, sold an entire subdivision of single family homes to online investor fundrise as more yield chasing investors buy homes to rent or flip the uh, subdivision in conroe texas sold for 32 million dollars now think about you're building a subdivision for first-time home buyers and yet you, you have all these houses for sale and one company comes in and says i'll take the lot what what does that signal to you and and what what were your thoughts when you heard about companies investors buying entire subdivisions i think it's it's crazy um and it's just zapping all of those opportunities for the regular buyer out there it's hard enough to get your foot in the door in this market in this crazy market that we're in and now having this company just come in and or this fund just come in and pull the whole thing off and the thing is uh, the, the builder said that they made like a 50% profit on this, a 50% profit. Like they paid probably a, way more than, I don't know. I don't know what the, the yield would have been otherwise, but man, that's a lot less work and it's huge. Now, so a couple things to think about with this. So a pension fund is going to buy a whole subdivision in one County in one spot. It, you always, you always think about diversification, right? And and that's one thing that I fear with maybe this company buying up a whole subdivision. Like they own that whole subdivision. If something happens in Mon Conroe, Texas or whatever it is, you know, there's a big storm, there's, you know, naturally you're gonna have insurance or what if the market dies or the rental market goes, they're gonna either try to rent these out, right? So now you're gonna have a whole subdivision of rentals, which brings in a whole different aspect of things. So that's the plan is to rent them out, is yeah. to buy them hold on to them as a hedge as a hedge um you know for maybe possibly better returns as a hedge you know against inflation and um you know you're saying diversification you know they're all in one spot you know they need to diversify well this is diversification compared to bonds compared to stocks compared no, to you right. this this is diversification at its finest yeah no I, I i love the idea i love the idea of um portfolios buying houses renting them out i think it's a great thing because Let's face it, most of the time our property values are increasing. We might see dips, but for, for the long run, I mean, take this area as an example, we've seen huge increases in value and you know, it's it's a good thing to buy buy real estate. And in 30 years it's paid off if you did it right. You know, that whole asset is then owned and free, you know, income source going for you. So I think it's really smart. My only my only thought was Hopefully, I'm sure they're buying multiple subdivisions in different areas or homes in different areas. And that's my thought is like, don't even don't just go for that Texas neighborhood, you know, buy in Arizona, buy in Pennsylvania, buy wherever you can to diversify that portfolio. Because, you know, if one thing happens to that area, then you're kind of sunk. Right. So just be careful on that. But the other thing is now these funds with millions of dollars that they're paying millions of dollars cash with are competing against our buyers, right? First time home buyers. First how time are they going to buy how a house? You, how, how can you compete with right. something like this? So how do you compete with somebody that has millions of dollars? You can't, you can't compete because it's just going to be cash. Now here's the interesting thing. 
right? We have disclosures in our contract and it says, you know, you can't discriminate against certain buyers. Can you discriminate against a corporation or a hedge fund buying your house, right? That's a, it's an interesting question because, all right, who do you want to buy your house? Who do you want to have the advantage? You know, say both contracts are equal or one's a little bit, you know, the, the, the person that really wants it is slightly lower than the corporation that's buying it. Do you want a corporation buying and competing with all these people because you're going to be a buyer at some point too? Or do you feel bad for this other person that just wants a, a friggin' house and sell it to them? You know, and can you discriminate in that way? Right. Well, everyone's money is green. And I had a, a listing earlier this year and we were going through the offers and one of them marked like, you know, all cash buyer does not plan on on living in the in the property and is clearly going to be a rental property. My seller goes, oh well, I don't I don't want to rent a, you know a rental property in in this you know neighborhood that I I've loved living in it. And I had to stop and I was like, it doesn't matter. Like we can't make our decision on who you want to live in the house. Now I'm not naive to think that that doesn't happen because I know it does happen. Oh, yeah. But if you're going to tell me that you're deciding between multiple offers it's got to be a specific term in the contract and not the buyer's name or whether or not the buyer is a renter or not. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, money's green and that's really what makes a decision. But you know, there's, I've, I've had definite decisions made on, on other factors and it's not always the green that people care yeah. about. Um, I hear you. But it, you know, down the line, it just, it, you, you hear all of these stories about these investors and these big companies buying up all these houses. And then, you know, where does that American dream go of, of owning your own home? Is it even possible anymore because these corporations own them you know, you know, down the line, right? If they're owning a huge chunk of these, it becomes much more difficult for the ordinary person to purchase a home. And that's the biggest issue. That's the issue. And that's where, buyers. And, right. you know, we saw the meme with BlackRock, you know, buying um, a bunch of houses. The Onion came out with an article. It says BlackRock thrilled um, to announce purchase of 800,000 houses thousandth dream home wow completely butchered that one it says uh and this is a, a, a parody article we've always wanted to own a, a 475 thousandth home with granite countertops and a big backyard we're just over the moon that we managed to find it <laughs> so there's there's a lot of houses being purchased by blackrock by being purchased by you know other pension funds but is that really going to make a dent in the single family house market because these are going to be held forever but if you're a first time home buyer do you have to buy a brand new house like do you have to buy brand new construction no are they are they only buying brand new construction you know that's the I thing don't is know. they're they're I'm not sure. if they're buying resales and and you're talking about one company buying 800,000 homes and there's multiple companies of these there that's millions of homes how many millions of homes are in the in the area and how many millions of buyers are out there i think it definitely has an impact on the smaller buyer, the the buyer that's you know first time home buyer. It's going to be a lot more difficult if the trend continues in that direction, and I think it will. I mean, we've seen how much different trends have exploded, like you know the um, the i buyer trend. You know now that's huge. Um, so yeah. I think it's I think it's definitely going to cut into to the ordinary buyer for sure. Yeah, and finishing this out, you know, this is a I'm, I'm going to read a a comment from Reddit. So bear with me here, but this is a, a, a hedge against inflation. This is a alternative to bonds that, you know, aren't as uh, far out on the risk curve as equities. Um, you know, it's, it's easy to leverage yourself with uh, this type of property and um, it's cheap to borrow right now. You know, the Fed is, has kept rates low and many structures shield yourself from corporate taxes. So there's a lot of reasons why corporations like this would purchase many millions of dollars worth of houses which brings us to our next article that we're going to get into right now which is entitled zillow taps ai to improve its home value estimates now a few years ago zillow um, put out a contest to see who could improve their um, zillow's estimate and then two years ago they chose a winner and now they are rolling out this new um, artificial intelligence, this new algorithm that uh, supposedly improves the Zillow estimate, I believe, down to an average of, um, I don't have the figure in front of me, but it might have been 6.9% of the actual um, value, which which still is, is high, but it's starting to get a little bit better and better every single year. And the reason that this is important is because speaking of large corporations that buy 
thousands and thousands of houses. I mean, imagine once Zillow hones in on this estimate and people other than someone in Tucson, Arizona with a $200,000 house can sell to Zillow online. I mean, you can buy cars online. You can buy many different boats online. You, you can buy many different things online. And pretty soon, whether your house is $200,000, $500,000, or even $800, a million, once Zillow figures this AI and this estimate out, we're going to have a lot of people selling to Zillow. At least that's that's my belief. Sean, what are your thoughts on Zillow improving their AI? Yeah, I mean, if you can get an all-cash offer quickly, easily, um, and you know, selling your house right to them, easy, I mean, I can see that happening. I still think 7% is a lot, right? I mean, that's a big, you know, if you're talking, and they're probably on the lower side of, of the market for the most part, maybe, but, you know, in a million dollar house, that's $70,000, right? So you've got to be careful on, on that kind of thing. And I looked up my my value on, on Zillow just to see, you know, compare it. And I definitely think they're light um, because the, the values have grown so much in the last year that, you know, a house that I sold, my house that I sold for, you know, it's probably one hundred and fifty to $200,000 more expensive this year. And so... Different pockets are are definitely different, you know. Like Lake Barcroft is is killing it right now, um, North Arlington, you know. So you have to be careful on that. Now, I think an improvement needs to be made, and it has been. Um, buying or selling your house to Zillow, it's always, what could I have gotten, right? If I would have just hit the hit the market. Um, now there there's. Redfin has their thing and you know I'll use an example of you know the townhouse that we went and saw a couple of weeks ago um, they I mean they gave them an amazing offer and it was kind of hard to pass up you know and so this house needed some some investments um, it probably needed I would say fifty thousand dollars in upgrades to get it to a level where we would have been happy to sell it on the market and I think that it would have gone well but when you get an eight hundred and sixty thousand dollar offer for a, a townhouse that needs a lot of work and it's not very big and you know, it's it's enticing, right? And so, uh, I think that a lot of people will go that route, especially when they don't want to put in the month or two months worth of work and that stress that goes along with it. Yeah, and you know, seven percent or whatever the Zillow service fee or Redfin service fee is is high. But these companies, they don't need to make a lot of money on these houses. It's a quantity business. So they're doing tens of thousands. I mean, even if they're making, you know, two thousand, five thousand, six thousand dollars on making each money. house, they're making money. I mean, these are programs that have lost millions and millions of dollars just to just to roll out the program. So the fact that they're improving their AI and it says that there's about nine hundred thousand dollar nine hundred thousand properties initially eligible to receive automatic cash purchases uh, to purchase um, on their property. Now there's um, there's certainly going to be more as they, they hone in on this. And, you know, I, I think the, the consumer, I think it's just going to be better to the consumer because they're going to have more options. Now, sometimes when you're looking at these, you know, Zillow, Facebook ads of we'll buy your house with one click, it can be a little deceptive. They don't outwardly say, you know, 7.5% or 7% or whatever it may be. But I, I think as this gets better, the AI gets better, that service fee may stay the same. It may go down as, as the price gets better. And, mm -hmm. you know, they, they can afford to maybe like on that townhouse, maybe pay five thousand dollars more, maybe pay twenty thousand dollars more than it, it than it may appear because they have the economies of scale to do that. Yeah, and you have to think of in the future, Zillow is paving the way, right? They're paving the way for this whole process to happen. Their their valuations, and who's following is Redfin, and then all the other ones will start coming in. So those service fees will start coming start come down, uh, and it'll be a lot more competitive for those you know, those yeah. people. I mean, how do you compete with Zillow, a billion dollar corporation? It's basically Zillow versus agents that take listing photos with their thumb, <laughs> like in the corner of the photo. <laughs> That's the competition. Dude, I know, man. It's funny. Um, Zillow actually called me right before I got here um, to see if I wanted to buy leads. And I was like, mm, they no, still do that. Yeah. They, they haven't in a while. They reached out to me and you know, they're like, Hey, uh, saw that you were interested. And I was like, you know, I thought about it for a little while, but once you turned into a brokerage, I, I said, definitely not. You know, I, I just totally flipped. So, 
uh, when I heard the news that they were going to do that, I was like, well, why am I going to buy leads off of another brokerage and you're going to have all my information? Not just, I'll, I'll do a different source. And that's what I told him. I was like, listen, I'm, I've, I've already a plan in place that I'm getting my own leads. I don't need yours zillow leads work they're just a lot of work like you need to have the whole operation behind and there's a lot of teams in the area that oh yeah that use zillow leads that love buying zillow leads and and they crush it it's just they they have the, the, they have the system machine. in place yeah you need to be calling 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 you know following up showing a ton of houses that are not going to become you know come to fruition so you've got to have those buyer uh, agents that are willing to just go out and on, on a whim every day and show properties that you might never close that deal, you know? So. Yeah. So our third topic is from uh, the New York post among other outlets. And it is entitled live in this iconic revamped sunset beach water tower for drum roll $5 million. So cool. a water tower has been converted into a residential property and it is for sale near the Sunset Beach, Seal Beach area uh, around like Huntington, California, listed for 4.95, spanning four stories, four beds, four baths, 2,800 square feet with a wraparound deck for panoramic and mountain views. Sean, are you living in a water tower? Would, would you live here? I mean, I think it's really cool. The thing is, would I live in it? Sure, I'd live in that thing. That's awesome. It's so unique. It's You buy it when the opportunity's there. What's the appraisal there, look like? I mean, <laughs> what comps are they You cannot pulling? use a comp. I mean, think about a, a condo building, a very narrow condo building, and you own the whole thing, right? I mean, it. you don't start to get into the house until you're about five stories up, right? And then you're in the actual... Maybe there's. I'd be there, afraid I would fall. Like it's you, you have twenty people in there, you know. Because when I saw this, I was like, Airbnb rental. Oh, like yeah. I would love to go here and spend the weekend. But if I had five friends and if I invited them over, we're gonna have a couple white claws. But look at the ledge there. Yeah, this does not a lot of room for error. I wonder is there is there a house on the base there too? Is that part of the house and then you have the maybe an elevator? All of the photos show, show you know the rounded from part. the rounded top and and you got to look this up. I mean, it's hot tub, it's you know. It's such a cool thing because there's there's a band of windows around the whole the, thing. The ground floor includes two garages, storage room and and you know the above ground space. Yeah. So then then there's the water tower that comes up and then you know think about stilts that come up and then the big huge water tower and all around the whole whole stack of it is windows so you can see panoramic views i mean it's amazing originally built in 1892 and i believe it, it was um either partially re in the 1980s the tower was dilapidated and in being you know almost torn down and so they um they redesigned the structure uh, but I don't know how comfortable I'd be in a water tower from 1892. I mean, you, you're definitely going to be that person that uh, that stands out. I, you know, the, what worries me is winds, right? Man. So I had to Google, <laughs> does California get hurricanes? And I, <laughs> like, I thought it was a dumb question, but like many people have Googled this, so I, I don't feel as silly. A California hurricane is a tropical cyclone since 1900. There have only been two tropical storms to have hit California. Yeah, well that's so I think the answer is no. Better. But still, being that high up next to the ocean, it's kind of weird. It you know, is. but if you're in one of those movies like 2012 or Greenland where just like there's just a random flood because of you're set, whatever, <laughs> you're just hanging out. Like every now and then on YouTube, I'll have the recommended and it'll be like that t like tsunami from Japan. And it is like the scariest mm -hmm. video because you just hear this siren, eerie silence, and then wave, wave, wave. It's a crazy thing, man. Yeah, you're protected so if you're on that. that if, um, if, you can, if your stilts are strong enough, yeah, you're good I don't to know. go. I don't know. But then I, I you'd don't, be the only guy yeah. sitting up in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> I, I don't think there's going to be a tidal wave hit in California. Yeah. I'm, I'm also not um, Well, the other thing you have to think yeah. about is earthquakes, right? They get a lot of earthquakes. Is that... I mean, I'm sure they thought of this when they were building it, but that thing is, uh, you know, you could see how it could crumble pretty <laughs> on, quickly. On right? stilts, yeah. Yeah. I think it's super cool. It looked like it's been rented. Um, it was on the rental market in 2019. So it, it looks like it, maybe it's had some uh, market activity on and off the market. Be interesting to follow this listing and, uh, and see what ends up happening. Yeah, let's I don't update think, on this. I don't think you're going to have the everyday buyer come out, but 
you know, having an event there or uh, renting it out for the weekend. That'd be pretty cool. Very cool. All right, guys. Well, that just about does it for another episode of the Sean and Matt show. If you made it this far, be sure to hit the thumbs up button. Hey, comment down below whether or not you live in this uh, this water tower. I, I think I could do it for a weekend. Other than that, I, I'd reach my limit. Probably drive you nuts after a while, but definitely uh, Airbnb in that thing. I mean, there's That's... so many things that I, you know, I would have to think about living in that spot, but. Yeah. I don't think that's going to be your primary residence yeah, if you're spending not. $5 million on a water tower. No, it's these rich guys that are like, I have to have it. That's yeah. what, you know. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Until next time, we'll see you then. Take care.